Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering interception. Now, before we even get started, I'm going to ask you, as always, to please help support my channel. If you appreciate the videos that I'm bringing your way, please support me. And you can do that by sharing my videos on your social media platforms, by liking this video. You know you're going to love it. Go ahead, like it now. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website at nexusnursinginstitute.com. All right, guys, let's get started. Interception. So let's look to see what it is. Let's look at this pathophysiology. Look at what it says. It says interception occurs when the proximal segment of the bowel telescopes that means it folds into itself it telescopes into the more distal segment pulling the mesentery with it and i'm going i'm going to show you a visual so you can see what's happening the mesentery is compressed and angled and it results in lymphatic and venous obstruction well how's that happening take a look look at this bowel that is telescoping into itself so what's happening here guys remember the tissues, organs, they get perfused by the blood. The blood is what carries the oxygen, vitamins, nutrients, right? But these tissues are being strangled. Why are they being strangled? Look at how it's telescoping into itself. It's basically suffocating, all right? And along, as you see, it's pulling um, into itself. It's also pulling a along uh, those vessels, nerves. It's the bowel telescoping into itself. The tissues are suffocating because of this. This forms the classic current jelly-like stools. Think about it. When the patient has a bowel movement, why does the stool look current jelly-like? Because all of, you know, the blood and all that crap that's now in the stool because of this. That bowel telescoping into itself. So whenever you see current jelly-like stool, automatically your brain needs to go to interception. That's what you should be suspecting, okay? Let's look at the clinical manifestations. Sudden acute abdominal pains. Now, um, if you guys watched that video I did on priority patients, you know that when you see that word sudden, that's the patient you're running to. And when you see acute, that's the patient you're running to. They're put together, sudden acute abdominal pain. This is serious, guys. You're going to be running to this patient, sudden acute abdominal pain, the child screaming and drawing the knees towards the chest. Them drawing their knees towards the chest, it alleviates some of that pain. And that's why you see them do that. Um, the child appears comfortable during intervals um, between episodes of pain. They have vomiting, lethargy. Again, passage of red, red because of that blood, red current jelly-like stools. Why? The stool is mixed with blood and mucus because remember, let's take a look. It is telescoping within itself and it's pulling the mesentery with it, okay? So that mucus and blood is going to be found in the stool and that's what makes that stool look um, current jelly-like. Patient's gonna have a tender distended abdomen. When you try to palpate, you go, they're gonna have a palpable sausage-shaped mass where located in the upper right quadrant. The ones I put a star next to, by the way, are the ones, if you happen to get a test question on NCLEX, ATI, HESI, in regards to um, interception, those are the ones that they ask you about the most often. Those are the ones that they put as the clinical manifestations. So if you remember anything else, make sure you remember the child, child screaming and drawing up the knees towards the chest, the red current-like jelly stools, and the palpable mass shape uh, mass in the upper right quadrant. I don't write the exam, guys. They can ask you about anything. So make sure you know all of it. I'm just saying the ones I put a star next to, make sure you know them first. All right. Nursing alert. The classic triad of interception sim uh, symptoms. Abdominal pain. Abdominal mass bloody stools. It, this is potentially life-threatening. Be aware of signs closely observed and refer these children for further medical evaluation. You see those signs and symptoms, you should suspect um, interception, and it is considered a medical emergency for that pediatric patient. Let's look at the diagnostic studies. How is it confirmed by an ultrasound? 
So yes, you suspect that patient has interception. How do we confirm it by ultrasound? A rectal examination reveals mucus because remember, as it's intercepting, as it's pulling into itself, it's pulling along the mesentery with it, okay? So we'll see mucus, blood, and occasionally a low interception itself within that rectal exam. Therapeutic manage, management. Sometimes, guys, an air enema is enough. An air enema will do the job and the patient won't need surgery. Sometimes it doesn't work, but that's part of the treatment. They can do an air enema with or without water-soluble contrast or ultrasound-guided hydrostatic saline enema. Of course, patient's going to get IV fluids. NG decompression and antibiotic therapy can be used before hydrostatic reduction is attempted. We want to make sure that that patient doesn't get infection. We want to make sure that we keep them hydrated because remember, they're losing blood. That's why we're seeing blood in the stool. So they're losing blood. We want to make sure that we keep them hydrated. We want to make sure they don't get any ulcers. We're going to, that's why we're doing NG decompression and we're giving them antibiotics to make sure that they don't get an infection. If these procedures are not successful, then the child may need surgical intervention. And so they'll have surgery to actually um, release that interception. Care management. The description of the child's Look at this keyword, guys. Severe, not just colicky, severe colicky abdominal pain is combined with vomiting. And this is a serious sign, significant sign of interception. As soon as a possible diagnosis of interception is made, the nurse prepares the parents for the immediate need for hospitalization. That patient's going to be NPO. The minute we um, suspect that patient has interception because they might have to go into surgery, right? So we're going to prepare the parents for hospitalization and the non-surgical uh, technique of hydrostatic reduction, that's going to be tried first because sometimes it works and that's all we need. And if it doesn't work, patient's going to have to have surgery. The usual pre-op procedure, such as maintenance of NPO status, you know that any patient, that there's a possibility of them having to go into the OR, they're going to be NPO, right? So NPO status, routine laboratory testing, such as CBC. Why CBC? We need to be looking at that H&H, &H, right? We need to be looking at those RBCs. We need to be looking at the WBCs, your analysis, signed parental consent and pre-anesthetic um, pre sedation are performed before surgery. The nurse monitors all stools. Children with perforation, guys, perforation, that is a even worse medical emergency, right? Perforation, this means now we're going to have fecal matter in what's supposed to be a sterile environment. Children with perforation will require IV fluids, systemic antibiotics, and bowel decompression before undergoing surgery. Fluid volume replacement and restoration of electrolytes may be required in such children before surgery. Now take a look at this nursing alert. It says the passage of normal brown stool usually indicates that the interception has resolved itself. And so that's one of the reasons you're constantly monitoring that um, stool because this patient may be set for surgery and then they pass the stool, no mucus, no blood. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe this has resolved itself because sometimes it does just resolve itself. So you're going to be monitoring for the stool. So if you see a normal stool, you let the healthcare provider know and another ultrasound will, will be ordered and they'll look to see if it resolved itself. Okay. So passage of a normal brown stool usually indicates that the interception has reduced itself. This is reported to the healthcare provider immediately. Why? Because we don't want to do surgery on the patient unless we absolutely have to. So you're going to report immediately and um, immediately who may choose to alter diagnostic and therapeutic care plans. So that's very important. So you need to know what's normal. Brown stools with no blood, no mucus in it. And I put NCLEX next to it because that's been seen on NCLEX many, many, many times. After spontaneous or hydrostatic reduction, the nurse observes for the passage of water-soluble contrast media. If it was used, you got to make sure that it was passed and stool patterns because the interception may recur. And that's interception, guys. It's not as hard as you thought, right? All right. Um, I'm going to do a housekeeping with you very quickly because I've been talking about this, about this 
um, NCLEX review that I'd like to do for you guys. I want to do a live review on YouTube and it's going to be free of charge for you guys. Um, only going to be on for a few hours, but, and I'm thinking about making it, um, a series. We'll see. But guys, I need you to support me in this because I'm taking my time out. I'm doing this. I'm not asking you guys for anything. I'm just doing it because I want to help you guys, but I need you guys to help support my channel. So with that being said, I'm going to be announcing the date soon. I should have um, the date by the end of tomorrow, I should know when I'm going to do this live review. It's going to be on YouTube and the book that I'm going to be teaching on, I will announce that as well. And I'll give you guys at least a week and a half to get that book on Amazon. And the reason for that, I don't want to have any um, copyright issues. So I don't want to share my screen where I'm using a book. I'll let you guys know what book I'm using. If I suggest you get that book so you guys can follow along, but um, my review will be coming up soon. It's going to be on YouTube, the book and the date to be announced. And I'm asking you guys, please support my channel. Um, like this video, share, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And go ahead, take a look at um, my description box there. I have other ways that you can support my channel as well. A gift of appreciation, welcome. It's all in there. Um, don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And almost daily, I cover different types of nursing questions on my other social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. So make sure you guys check me out there. Thank you so much for watching my video, and you guys will catch me on the next video.